Hello everyone. So Pixinsight just released their new gradient correction tool and I've got all the info you need about it right here. I'm going to go over some tips and tricks for you to know about it and I'm going to use it to process a couple of my sample images and see how it compares with dynamic background extraction or the DBE tool that I was using up to now. So let's get started. Also, if you haven't seen my last video, which was about using GPU acceleration for NVIDIA GPUs to speed up your PixInsight image processing, be sure to check that out because I was able to increase the speed of PixInsight processes in some cases by a factor of 10. So you're definitely missing out if you haven't seen that yet. Let's get started. So once you have the latest version of PixInsight installed, you can go to Process, All Processes, and find the Gradient Correction tool over here. Now these are all of the default settings and there are a couple of sliders you should know about. The first here is low tolerance. The low tolerance slider is useful if you get a glow around your dark nebula in your image and increasing the low tolerance slider can help you get rid of that glow and give you more accurate looking dark nebulae. Also, I find that uh, decreasing the low tolerance slider is helpful if you have a lot of edge glow in your images. So it'll give you significantly better results for that. The second slider you should know about, or the second two sliders, are scale and smoothness. Now, scale and smoothness are increased or decreased together by roughly the same amount, and they are useful for controlling the scale of the gradients. For complex gradients, decrease the scale and the smoothness, smoothness sliders. And for simple gradients, you should increase the scale and smoothness sliders to better preserve contrast. And increasing the scale and smoothness can also prevent overcorrection. So if you end up decreasing the scale, for example, to here, decrease the smoothness as well by roughly the same amount. You can actually have smoothness at about the same level as the scale. The next slider that you should know about is, uh, or the next checkbox, is automatic convergence. This checkbox here allows you to iteratively apply multiple instances of the gradient correction and it can give you more accurate results. So I like to have this checked on by default. And the next is structure protection. Now structure protection uh, allows you to protect large nebulae such as the Orion Nebula or the Pleiades that are quite dominant in your image and it'll help prevent overcorrection because overcorrection can cause the nebula to become dark. Now let's open up a sample image. The first sample image is this one here. This is a nebula called SH2-136. This was an image I took maybe six months ago at a dark site and it's well calibrated. I used flat frames and dark frames and bias frames, but you do notice some, some gradient on the, in the top left corner. So that's looking red and the bottom right corner is looking greenish. And there's also some darker regions at the bottom left. Now I will duplicate this image so that we can experiment with the DBE script later as well. So I'll move this out of the way. And I will apply the default settings in the gradient correction script to this image. And let's see what that looks like. So these are the default. Okay, so as you can see, that did an absolutely excellent job. Uh, I mean, the image looks phenomenal. I'm not even sure I need to touch anything. The red glow at the top left is completely gone. The uh, glow at the bottom right is completely gone and the bottom left is also very very good yeah i'm not even sure if i need to change anything and the nebulae look pretty good there's no unnatural glow around them now i will rename this image to gradient correction one And then since I had copied this image earlier, I will try to uh, process this using the dynamic background extraction. So all processes, dynamic background extraction, and then we'll compare the result and see how it looks. So these are the default settings in dynamic background extraction. Yeah, I will leave everything else at default and I will just select subtraction for the target image correction. And then I will uh, place those samples automatically and let's apply this we'll close that out and close out dynamic background extraction I will name this one dynamic background extraction one and as you can see in the gradient correction one 
the edges are all looking perfect. If you look at the dynamic background extraction one, the dark region at the very top is still there. And the edge at the bottom left is still darker. And there's also a green kind of glow near the top right over here that uh, that dynamic background extraction was not able to correct on its own. And there's also again a darker region over here. So in this case, gradient correction did a phenomenal job. Now I will try to manually place alignment points using dynamic background extraction to see if I can get a better result uh, by doing it myself. So I'll click on that and I will put in some optimum settings that, uh, that I like to use. Increase the size of this one and use subtraction again. Now I will manually place the points starting from the very top left. This is a very time consuming process. And now let's see how that will look. Okay, so on the left is the gradient correction, automatic settings. On the right is dynamic background extraction, which is my best attempt at it by placing align points manually everywhere. Now, if we look at the image on the left, again, looking absolutely excellent. On the right, this was my best attempt using the dynamic background extraction tool. And you can see there are some darker regions over here on the left where I wasn't able to fully correct it. On the top right as well, there are some darker patches where I guess there were some stars and also bottom right has not been fully corrected because there is a darker region there. And I do still see a little bit of greenish tint near the top right and that was my best attempt right now at using dynamic background extraction so gradient correction wins again now we'll minimize this and we will try one more thing we will use the automatic background extraction process and see if that can do a better job automatic background extraction uh, target image subtraction and we'll leave everything else at default and drag and drop that on there Okay, on the left again, gradient uh, correction. On the right, we have automatic background extraction. Now, in the automatic background extraction image, you can see that there are some large dark patches where the ABE had put the, uh, the check boxes too close to some brighter stars. Again, same thing over here. Bottom right is still dark and there's still a greenish glow up here. So ABE did not do a fantastic job of it. So it looks like by far, the winner here is the new gradient correction tool. So what I'm going to do now is I'll see if we can improve on this by manually making some adjustments. I'll reset all the settings to default. And now from what I can see over here, I just decrease the scale and smoothness. Use structure protection. Drag and drop that on there. And let's see how that looks. I'll name this one. So they look very similar, uh, but my manual settings on the right does have better correction in the edges uh, than the automated settings uh, in the gradient correction tool. Also the color correction is better. There's no more green splotch up here. And if we zoom into 100% on both of these images, we can compare this dark nebula. And as you can see now, using structure protection, it looks better uh, on the image on the right, which was my manual settings. And yeah, that seems to be the best of both worlds. So the settings that I would recommend for a target such as this one, tolerance around 0.5, which is the default, low scale such as value of two, smoothness lined up with that, and enable structure protection and automatic convergence. Now let's see what it can do with some other images. So this image is uh, not too bad. You can see a greenish glow uh, near the top left corner and all of the other corners are a little bit dark and the bottom right corner is a little bit reddish. So the flat frames had worked okay, but not perfectly. So using just the automated settings, let's see how well it does. Okay, that did quite well. Let's do before and after, before, after, before, after. Yeah, I think that did a really good job. Now, if I were to try to correct it a little bit more manually, here's what I would do. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Restretch the image. Yep, that is very good. Uh, but yeah, that looks very good. The edges are perfectly corrected, so no complaints from me there. Let's take a look at one more image. 
Now, this was an image I had taken with the, the moon being around 50% and being very, very close to the Horsehead Nebula without any filters. So there are quite a few gradients. As you can see near the uh, bottom part of the image, there's a strong greenish gradient, whereas the top of it is fairly dark. So let's uh, try the gradient correction tool. We'll use all default settings. And wow, that did a phenomenal job. Uh, this is before, after, before, after. And our last sample, let's take a look at a narrow band image. And as you can see in the HA filter, the corners are a little bit dark in some areas, but the flat frame correction did a pretty good job. On the right in the O3 filter, um, you can see that the corners are very bright. They are glowing, the flat frames overcorrected. So I've opened up some of my usual uh, processes that I use during processing. And I will use this process over here, this pixel math expression, to combine the HA and O3 into a bicolor narrow band image. So I'll name this one HA, name this one O3, and then I will combine these two into an HA O3 image. And as you can see, the corners are very, very bright. So that's the glow we saw in the, uh, in the O3 image. And now let's try to correct this using gradient correction. And we'll use the default settings. There's still a massive glow all around the outer edges. So to correct that, we'll have to make some changes. We will um, leave structure protection on. We'll enable automatic convergence. We will decrease scale and smoothness. We'll, we'll do an extreme decrease over here. And we can decrease low tolerance. So let's bring that down to maybe 0.2. We will undo structure protection, uh, decrease the low tolerance a little bit more as well. We'll, we'll bring it down even further, maybe 0 0.05. This is a little bit extreme, but I just wanna see what uh, it can do. There we go. Okay, that is beautiful. So decreasing the low tolerance value sufficiently can correct edge glows like that. This is perfectly corrected. No issue there at all with the, the edges anymore. So as you can see from these examples, the new gradient correction tool does a better job than anything I could do with dynamic background extraction or ABE before. Uh, so there's no reason for me to use anything else going forward. If you try out the gradient correction tool, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting like as that really helps out this channel. So thanks again for watching and clear skies.